What up, what up, what up, NLC Live, how you doing? If I haven't had the chance to meet you yet, my name is Tanner Bizet. Super excited to be able to talk with you guys today. Um, my wife and I, we get the honor to pastor the students of Real Life Conway. That is our student ministry at the Conway campus. I've been doing it for three years and now with my wife for one year. By the way, if you are a high school or junior high student between the age of 6th through 12th grade, sign up for our student conference. It's August 9th and 10th. There's going to be some awesome messages, some powerful worship, a whole lot of fun as well. If you like sports, come hang out. We're going to have some breakouts and competitions as well. You can sign up at nlccollide.tv. Parents, get your students signed up. Spots are filling up fast. All right, okay, let's open up to 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 12. As you are opening up there, if you don't have a Bible on you, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, what we've been doing in these NLC Live Devos is we've been going through a passage and then just like answering a couple questions or conversation starters based off of this passage, like things we can learn, such as like what sin to avoid or what command or what is God showing you that's new. And I believe it's been really powerful and I believe a lot of people are growing from it as well. So that's what we're going to do today. Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 12 says, I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested. But I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame, such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. Now, I read the scripture and I'm like, boom, hook me up with this plan. Like, God, <laughs> that'd be sweet. Give me riches, give me wealth, give me fame. But I think for us to truly understand what God is teaching us here, we have to look into the context of this passage. Now, Second Chronicles is about the reign of King Solomon. King Solomon comes from the family tree of David, okay? David is the king who had the slingshot, who killed Goliath. Awesome story. You've probably heard of it before. Now Solomon is king. And Solomon, at the beginning of, of his kinghood or kingship, whatever you call it, he asked God, he said, God, give me knowledge and give me wisdom. Now, I believe that God as Christians has granted us knowledge and wisdom as well. As Christians, knowledge, for example, we can learn in books that a lot of awesome authors have written. We can learn in the word. We can learn by going to church and getting poured into and I believe he's given us wisdom as well in form of Holy Spirit discernment inside of us, like how and when to use the knowledge that we are receiving. And so this is a really, really humble ask that, that King Solomon asked. He's like, yo, just give me knowledge and give me wisdom. And if you give me this, I'm fine. And then God hooks him up. Okay, so the command for us to obey is to ask, first of all. I believe growing up, my parents used to always tell me, Tanner, if, if you don't ask, you're not going to receive. And that's biblical as well. That if we don't ask God for things, he's not going to give it to us because he likes to be needed. He, he's almost like a selfish God. He really is a selfish God. He wants us to talk to him. And whenever we ask him for things, he will grant us and sometimes even more. Whenever we ask God for something humble, whenever he can notice the position of our heart is for building his kingdom and not for building our legacy, I believe he's like, boom, that's the person I'm looking for and I'll give you more as well. And this is exactly what happens with King Solomon. He looks at his heart and he's like, yes, I love it. I'm gonna give you knowledge. I'm gonna give you wisdom. But on top of that, I'm gonna give you these other things that you didn't even ask for. This is incredible because King Solomon, he wouldn't have received these other things unless he asked in the first place. So what's a practical thing for us to know whenever we are walking day to day asking God in prayer for stuff? I think it's that God, like I said earlier, looks for the position of our heart. Like, okay, can I trust him with a little? Can I trust her with a little? And if so, I believe that God can trust us with a lot more. So next time you're in a prayer, ask yourself, like, is this something that I truly need? Is this something that's going to grow God's kingdom? Or is this kind of just a selfish desire? And whenever we can distinguish those two, I believe our prayer life is going to grow. And I believe that God is going to be able to um, trust us with a lot more as well. So that's what I want to pray for you guys here today. If you don't mind, just close your eyes. Let me pray over you and then we'll be done. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we love you. God, I know sometimes I can ask for some really selfish prayers. Or God, I can ask, Lord, where are you? Why aren't you answering my prayers? When God, I know that you're just a good father. And Lord, you want us to talk to you. You want us to ask you. But God, you also want to see that the position of our heart is humble. And so God, that's what we pray for here today. That Lord, our hearts would be humble. And that when we approach you, God, it would all be about advancing your kingdom, not ours. Okay? We love you, God. And this is what we need. This is what we believe. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, guys.